GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge 38 Blessing of Life Blessing 12 Care for Your Children Part 3 Hello everyone You are listening to GTM Podcast 38 Blessing of Life Right now we are reaching Blessing 12 which talk about care for your children it doesn't just start when the child was born. In fact, if you listen from the previous episode, you will see now that it had to start before the child was conceived. And today we will continue from the conception to birth. Before we begin, if you have not listened to the previous episode just yet, we suggest you go back and listen to them for more understanding. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share to help continue supporting us and Share it with your friends, so they can also be blessing just like you are. Now that Eve, everyone is already set, let us begin. From Conception to Birth Even 2,500 years ago, the Lord Buddha's own mother, Queen Mahamaya, knew how to take painstaking care of both her physical and spiritual well-being while she was with child. The queen ate only agreeable foods and frequented the harmony of the natural environment as she came close to the time of the childbirth. Queen Maya also maintained purity and stillness of mind throughout pregnancy by keeping the eight precepts and meditating. It seems that for Buddhists, care of the child since conception is an implicit part of the art of motherhood, reiterated anew in the present day, when medical science is catching up with ancient know-how and seemingly coming to the same conclusions. The mother who keeps the fifth or the five precepts will need not worry that her child be underweight or handicapped at birth. Because refraining from alcohol, intoxicating drugs and cigarettes cuts out a significant proportion of the risks in this respect. Even medicine taken by the mother may have side effects for the unborn child. The medicine taken should therefore only be those prescribed by the family doctor. Consideration of physical health alone is not sufficient. The mother needs to be spiritually healthy too, so that the child to be born is perfect in mind as well as body. Modern medical science has shown that the embryo is sensitive to its mother's mood and emotions. Indeed, during the time of being carried in the womb, the child is in the process of character formation. The art of having a good child is acknowledged these days, not to be merely a matter of genetic engineering, but the suitability of the intrauterine environment created by the mother during pregnancy. It is the key to raising one's children from the time of conception. For this reason, the pregnant mother, the mother should attempt to keep her mind calm, undisturbed, stable, and cheerful during the time of pregnancy. There is no end to the practical ways in which the mother can help the character of the child in the womb. While she is carrying the child, the mother should imagine pictures of how she would like her child to turn out. She should speak and sing lullabies to the child in her womb. She shouldn't worry whether the child can hear or not. But bear in mind that if the child is at ease when he hears the mother's voice, this influence will carry across the time when the child is born. If the pregnant mother is at ease when she hears the word Samma Arahang. The baby, when it is born, 
will immediately be at ease whenever it hears the words Samma Arahang. The mother should be a teacher to the baby she is carrying, a teacher of meditation. Just by creating the mood of centeredness and peace for the child, when he closes his eyes inside the mother's womb, he will see not darkness, but a brightness inside himself, the brightness of the virtue of his own two parents. There are certain things which the pregnant mother should avoid too. Just as good experiences by the mother can have a good effect on the child during pregnancy, if there is any adverse influence on the mother's mind, the embryo will be adversely affected. If a child is born into the womb of a mother who often quarrels, the child which is born is likely to be morose and uncheerful by nature. Thus, if the mother finds stressful conditions at work or has other traumatic experience, the child will be highly strung. Better then, for the mother to take maternal leave for work during her pregnancy. Very negative thoughts by the mother, especially by those mothers who have contemplated abortion, are picked up by the child or may cause the child to have instinctive distrust or fear of his mother throughout his life. Better then, that the mother meditate every day, performing chanting, give alms, and listen to sermons. The child whose mother is positive thinking and cheerful during pregnancy is likely to be cheerful and positive thinking like her. Parents who make great self-sacrifice careful and wise in the support of their child during pregnancy will gain a child who is an altruist, true and wise. The care taken by the mother during pregnancy will be transformed by the child into love and respect for his parents, a readiness to go on to the next stage of his development that will become after his delivery. Even the attitude of the father has an influence on the well-being of the baby in the womb of his wife. The father will have to work harder when his wife is pregnant, helping her with the heavy work she would normally do herself, and being careful not to create situations that are going to irritate or upset the serenity of the mother. Even if normally, he might bring the tensions and stress of his work back home with him. Now he must start to be more careful to leave his work in the office and not bringing the chaos of his work home with him. And thus everyone, now see in every effect during the time that the child is conceived in his mother's womb, everything that could relate to body and mind of the mother can also affect to the child. We will continue to the next part, which is from birth to adulthood. This is one of the crucial important ways to raise the child as well. So let's stay tuned. Before we part today, Please help subscribe, like and share to continue supporting us. See you again next time. Until then.